Okay, I know what you're thinking. Um, how come I'm not wearing the same shirt that I have on in my thumbnail? Well, I did do a review on this movie earlier on before I rewatched it. So after rewatching it not long ago, um, I'm like, yeah, I need to redo this because there are some moments, there are some things that happen in the movie that I forgot to mention, let alone I, that I just forgot, you know, that happened in the movie. So here we go. This is my next crack. No, this is me taking a second crack at reviewing this movie. So, but that all being said, there's going to be spoilers in this video. So, you may not want to watch this video. You may not want to watch it if you have not seen the movie. So, go see the movie and then come on back and hear what I got to say about it. Now, I got to say, um, the opening scene did give us some indication of what happened with Peter's parents. And we're led to believe that they died in the plane crash. And... And, um, they, I don't know. I mean, it does look like, yeah, it does look like they're indeed, they have indeed died in that plane crash. But I'm guessing they could have left an opening for a third movie if they were able to do it for them, you know, like where, let's say, at least Peter's father was still alive. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, we watching this movie again, uh, Spider-Man, I mean, like, this, you know, this felt more like a Spider-Man movie. It was lighthearted. You felt, you know, like you felt this, you know, everything you were supposed to feel in a Spider-Man movie. And Andrew Garfield is doing a much better job as, as playing Spider-Man. And when he is, he's cracking more jokes. He's funnier. He's like, uh, he actually feels like he's embodying Spider-Man this time around. And, um... I mean, he's doing a little bit better as Peter Parker, you know, like in on the Peter on the Peter Parker alter ego, but um, he's not as. I mean, he still he still needs to be, in my opinion, I still think he needs to do a better job at being Peter Parker. But he's doing a much better job than he did in the first one, and um, and he feels um, he feels more accurately fleshed out in this movie than he did in the first one, and. Um, and I gotta say, um, and when they introduced, like, Harry Osborn in this movie, um, at first, you know, like, when, you know, like, since it's been a while since I've seen the movie, I didn't really buy into that they've known each other for a while, but after watching it again just recently, I'm like, okay, I can, I can buy into that they've been friends for a while, and it's been a long time since they've seen each other, and, um, and and also like you know with, with the whole back and forth thing with Gwen with with uh, Gwen Stacy, like where okay you know we can you know we can you know be a, actually be a couple and then and then not too long after um, he is basically like having conflicts like where he knows he shouldn't be with her because of what her father said and that's haunting him throughout this movie like you know here and there and. You know, it's like we all have been there. We all have been there at that point when we were, you know, when we were teenagers. Like, where it's like, yeah, I know I shouldn't be with this person, but I can't help but still pursue them, you know, like, and, you know, and be there and, and stuff like that. I mean, like, we've all been there. So that, that's, that's kind of relatable, like, with what Peter has gone through, like, with, you know, with Gwen in this movie. And, um, and they do, I mean, like, once again, the magic that, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone brought to the movie, you know, like where their real life relationship. I mean, they brought that into this movie, and and it feels, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I feel like that's how they actually are with each. They, they were with each other in real life. Since it's been a while, since like once again, since it's been a while since I've seen this movie, until like recently, um, I thought that there was not a lot. I I thought that. The whole thing with Peter's parents was still left unanswered. Um, even like we just found out just a little bit, you know, like of what you know what his father was doing, but you know before he and he and and um and Peter's mother took off, or they had to leave. Um, but it all came. It, it I mean they did bring closure on this, so like where, you know, Peter's father did work for Oscorp and um. And, and then basically he went behind her back and and basically um, 
you know, and, and he tried to abandon his research and not, you know, like, because, um, he, um, the, the DNA that he injected into the spiders, the radioactive spiders that, I guess, that they were making or whatever, it was with his, with his own DNA, and, 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 and they, that's what they needed for it to be, for it to, for it to make it whole, pretty much, and, um, I mean, the fact that, you know, Oscorp is working on those radioactive spiders, you know, like, was a little too much, like, how Oscorp is the reason that this, this is all coming together because of the radioactive spiders, and this, and that, and this, and that, and all these, all this weaponry, and this, and that, and this, and that, I mean, but, I mean, it just felt a little, a little much, but, um, I mean, I mean, it is what it is, and, um, and also, like, um, Electro is probably one of the coolest villains, like, that ever was brought onto the big screen in a Spider-Man movie. And, um, and I have to say, like, with his theme, his theme is the best, the best theme, like, of a villain in, in these movies. Number one. And Green Goblin is, like, right at number two with him. And the other... I mean, and, and, and Doc Ock's theme is, like, at number three. Now, um, Venom's theme and, and Sandman's theme, pff, they suck. <laughs> they suck. But anyway, um, and also, like, I noticed that, um, that Electro is one out of the two villains that have been introduced into a live-action Spider-Man movie where they don't know who Spider-Man is. They just left it as that, like, where they don't find out that he's Peter Parker. So that's pretty interesting. Like that's something different that they haven't that no other Spider-Man movie has done before. And um like um and also like you know like where I do like how spy like how the radioactive spiders become relevant after Peter's been bitten by one of them. Um I I kind of wondered that like how come how come they you know the, the you know the spider just bites him and then it just it just it's just like okay everyone forgot about that spider after you know he bit peter and then now he's spider-man and then i guess you know the spiders are never never to be seen again like at least they brought some explanation to that in the in the in this movie so you know i'm yeah i really liked it and how they did that too so good job guys and um and how and how we how do we and how do we know that these spiders are not biting other random people because they will just they're just useless. I mean, outside of the Parker gene, apparently. And I wonder what gave you know um, gave Spider-Man that a possibility that the the assumption of that a possibility to where um, his blood would not be compatible with. I mean, with Harry's, you know, like, I mean, I get it because, you know, different blood types, you know, that can be risky, but what gave him that conclusion before he found out that, you know, that his DNA will not work with anyone, you know, the spire will not work with anybody else, but with, you know, within his own DNA, you know, like with, um, his father and then it's passed on to Peter, you know what I mean? And also, like, you know, like how Harry becomes the Green Goblin and 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 they extract the venom from the radioactive spider. I'm like, uh I'm okay. Whatever. <laughs> and um so they had to shoehorn his transformation into the goblins just so they can kill off Gwen Stacy. And um Yeah, um and made like for a minute it's like they were preparing us for that, like the way Peter would push away Gwen and then sort of make her and then and just lead her to believe that they can still have a relationship together or it just like back and forth back and forth and then you see in the marketings of the tra of the trailers of, of you know the marketings for the movie um, where it leaves us little hints that maybe they do a, that they are actually gonna kill off Gwen I thought Maybe possibly it'll keep her alive until the, a third movie and then they're going to kill off there. But they did it here. And it felt it felt a little choppy. You know, like just the way they 
brought, the way they had Terry become Green Goblin like right at the last second and um but you know Gwen's death alone you know was handled really well it was performed well and I felt you know it you know my heart was aching for Peter like you know when when he had to basically you know endure that and um and I, di I didn't feel that impactful like when you see that he's basically been he or I, or I guess he hasn't been spider-man for like about a year because all these different seasons have passed when he's visiting Gwen Stacy's grave and it's like the next thing you know it's winter and it's fall and yada yada and da 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 and da 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 you know and um so I guess if they stretched it out a little bit it would have felt you know more I don't know I, I, think, I feel like it would have hit harder if, if they just let it stretch out just a little bit and then it just oh, it just fast forward right to where he becomes Spider-Man again and, and um and also I did like um what I would have changed like that would have been what they would have should have done that would have been interesting is that that little boy that um, Spider-Man saved from being junked by bullies what if they somehow instead have that as Miles Morales and he you know they and then they you know he basically looks up to him and whatnot and um and then he's the and he's the one who stand, stands up to Rhino in that in the Spider-Man costume and that sort of sets up his character for those of you who read the comics you know just google him if you don't know who he is okay and um and that that would have been cool and, and you know, like if Marvel wanted to, they could have used this Spider-Man and added s something else to the mi to the mystery of Peter's parents and say that, um, you know, that Richard, um, well, or that Richard came across Shield, or like, okay, these people we don't know who they are, but they came at at our door and and you know and they question us about you know Richard Parker and whatnot and then we find out like okay that was S.H.I.E.L.D. and um and then S.H.I.E.L.D. finds out that he what, he what he's been up to and then they basically I guess they want him to help them bring Oscorp down or keep them in the loop or whatever you know or whatever I mean like that would have been cool for them to do but you know I mean that this would have been a cool way to tie in this Spider-Man into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But, I mean, we get, we got, you know, they reinvented the character once again. And I like what they've done with Tom Holland so far with that brief little sneak peek that we got with him as Spider-Man. But if they wanted to use this Spider-Man, they, they could have, you know, done, that's what, that's what I felt they could have done. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, in... I mean, it was a little choppy at times. Um, they had, they they uh, they put actually put more effort into trying to live up to the word amazing this time around, and um, I can understand why pe some people didn't like it. I mean, Spider Man did a lot of did a lot of amazing things in this movie, like at the Times Square where he saves people from being electrocuted from touching the metal, um, like the you know the the metal ramps or like or whatever. You know, pulls them all away from that and being, you know, electrocuted. You know, that was done really good. And I'm like, wow. I mean, just just to leave it alone for a while and come back and watch it again, it just feels fresh and new. And it felt like, like as if when I watched it for the first time, where I'm like, I see a lot of positives in this movie. And I have to watch it again to really see the negatives. And the negatives really didn't bug me this time around. So... I mean, I'm really glad for that. And um, so with that all being said, I said, I would say since I watched this again, if I didn't watch this again just now, I would have given it three and a half chair spins out of five. But I may give it, I may give it, you know, four fair chair spins out of five. And, you know, like in, instead, now now that I watched it again and the, and the positive stayed with me, like after watching it that time. So here we go, four chair spins. One, two, three, four fair chair spins. That's why I said fair instead of solid. So fair is like one step closer to solid in my book. 
but um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a shame that they couldn't have done more with that, you know, because they, you know, they kind of learned from their mistakes from the dark and gritty tone that the first movie had, and and um, this felt more like a legit Spider-Man movie, which is, you know, what they should have done in the first place, and um, I mean, Andrew Garfield did a better job as Spider-Man this time around. He's actually more loosened up and he's more humorous and um, even though I think his persona as Peter Parker still needed some work on but it wasn't as as you know I guess it wasn't as needed it didn't need as it didn't need as it didn't need as much work as it did in the first movie. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> These fucking tongue tides that I you know that I keep getting the fuck but um yeah so my i guess my countdown to spider-man homecoming has come to an end so we got a few more days until the movie comes out and for those of you who've seen it just keep your mouth shut until um until you know it's open worldwide because i'm i will not see it until like thursday night so if you can wait until then to tell me about whatever happened in the comment section and whatever but i mean yeah so Okay, so if you guys enjoyed my review on this movie, make sure you thumb up the video, click subscribe if you're a newbie to the channel. Thank you for watching, and feel free to tell me if you think these movies suck or not. Should they should they have continued on with with this with the MCU, or or was it for the best for them to just end it here? I don't know. Feel free to tell me in the comment section. I mean, it had its flaws, and um, you know they could have changed some things here and there. But hey, that's almost like every other movie almost every movie so yeah I mean like I you know I actually like this movie a lot more than I did the last time I watched it so yeah I'll see you guys in the next video peace out y'all oh, peace out y'all <laughs>